So we know at one point there were five prequel shows in development at HBO, and that's now been whittled down to one. A show about the long night and the age of heroes, written by Jane Goldman. She's worked on stuff like Kingsman and Stardust, which I enjoyed, so that's a positive. It's also known that George R. R. Martin has been involved in the early development. Jane and George did sit down to talk about the show before she began writing the pilot, but I'm not sure of the extent of George's involvement. We also know it has a working title of Blood Moon, which I'll use for the sake of the video. Now, The Long Night and the Age of Heroes is an intriguing time period, as you know very little about it, as it's lore and a lot of what is known is merely legend and may not wholly be accurate. So because of this, there's a lot to work with in terms of forming an original story with new characters. However, for me, this is also part of the problem. I'm very much of the view that once Game of Thrones passed George's written work, the quality swiftly and notably dropped, culminating in the last season of the show. So what worries me is much of the story of Blood Moon will be original content. Though Dan and Dave have no real role in this show, and Jay Goldman seems to be a good writer and I've enjoyed her previous work, but for many, after being burned by the show, it is fair to be cautious. My question to HBO, when there are other wonderful stories written in the world by George, why would you roll a dice on Blood Moon? As much as I'm looking forward to it, part of me wonders, wouldn't it be better to base this prequel on stuff with a lot more established lore behind it, taking lessons from what was learned from the main show once it went off book? Now, I know a lot of people really wanted a Duncan Egg spin-off. However, I think the issue here, there is really not enough published yet to make it a start to finish story that very quickly HBO would have to go their own way with it and it presents the same risk as Blood Moon. Another idea that's become very popular is the idea of Robert's Rebellion. However, as much as I would love to see this, I don't think the story spans enough time to really do more than maybe be one or two seasons. And it's clear HBO wants something that will have legs. So here's my solution, Fire and Blood. Do an anthology series using Fire and Blood as the framework. Fire and Blood tells the story of the Targaryen dynasty as far back as Aegon's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms. It has all the elements people loved about the original show. The political intrigue, magic, complex characters and relationships, and of course dragons. A lot of the ancestors of people we know and locations we know would appear. So on a practical side, being able to use the same sets would be a positive and the audience would already have an anchor in the world. But even more of a positive would be the fact it would still be based on established written work by George and also have enough depth to run for many years, but also being an anthology, meaning you could keep the show fresh. Now, I think there's a very clear structure to how this could work. Aegon's Conquest would take up the first season of the show, with season two being about the first Dornish War and the bulk of Aegon's reign. Season three would then cover the reign of Aenys and end with his death and Maegor's power grab. Season four would then cover Maegor's reign and the civil war with Aegon and the Faith Uprising. Even though it's an anthology, you'd have a lot of characters carrying over from season to season, just a different group would be a focus each time. So by the time you get to, say, Maegor's reign, you'd already have got to know him over two seasons before he kind of came the lead character. This is even more important when it comes to characters like Reyna, who play such a pivotal role in such a large part of the story. And you would still have characters that would, could potentially span a very long period of time. For example, Megal's mother, the Queen Visenya. So we're at four seasons, and after Megal, it's where you start to get problems, as Jaehaerys' reign is so long, and I wouldn't say uninventful, but not as action-packed as, say, Megal or Aenys or Aegon. So for me, season five would focus on Jaehaerys establishing and consolidating his power, with his marriage to his sister a key factor, and the reconciliation of the faith. Then, season six would cover the really early part of his reign, but also towards the end, there'd be a lot of time jumps, so you could also get other key parts of his reign and the things he did. Here, I would actually end the Fire and Blood anthology, not because the rest of the stuff in Fire and Blood is not interesting, just I think certain events are so complex, you'd actually need their own show to do them right. So after season six of the anthology, I would jump forward to The Dance of Dragons. This would almost be a whole new show from the ground up. Out of all of the lore of the world, I think this event has the most to offer in terms of prequels, to the point I think it could even surpass the main show if done correctly. It has all the elements that people love from the main show and more. From what we know about the Dance of Dragons and Fire and Blood, I think there are about three seasons worth of content here and some key elements that could make a good episode nine shock and cliffhanger like people have become used to. Once this show has run its course, whether over two or three seasons, I think it would also be worth jumping forward again to the first Blackfire Rebellion. You could do another three seasons with this, and you can get to see a lot of people like Bloodraven, which then links back into the main show. And you'd also get lots of big battles and political plots, and the lack of dragons would make it budget friendly. Now, doing these kind of fire and blood anthologies, 
does present some issues. Yes, you can reuse a lot of sets and many of the key elements people love about the show carry over. But in terms of budget, the amount of dragons that would be needed to be used is very high, especially during the dance. We know animating three dragons for the main show was costly and they struggled and had to take budget away from other areas such as Ghost to afford it. I just think the already established law and history would make a good framework for a show with less risk than Blood Moon would be. However, I will say this for Blood Moon, it does have my attention. And from the sound of it, we will get a lot of answers in terms of White Walker's magic and why the seasons are so out of whack. Despite my ideas, I am still looking forward to Blood Moon, just I think there are a lot of other more established areas of lore that would make safer bets. I'd be very interested to see what other people think, whether people are excited for Blood Moon or perhaps would prefer something like Robert's Rebellion or a Fire and Blood anthology. So let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far into the video, liking and subscribing would be great.